Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Tonight, we are showing our love for one another by gathering for worship in our individual homes. I am grateful that we can share this night together, even though we are apart. If you have not yet um, gotten your communion elements, please do so now. You may have sandwich bread, crackers, a loaf of bread, Perhaps you have juice or wine or water, whatever elements you have in your home will be fine. And you may want to light a candle to create a worship space for you and your family and remove whatever might distract you during this time of worship. This will be a very simple service. Um, the scripture will be the story of Jesus' Last Supper, as told in Matthew 26, beginning with verse 17. The Jewish Seder, which is a meal um, that, that Jews um, celebrate during the Passover, begins with a question that the youngest child asks. Why is this night different from all the rest? And we may ask that question in a different way tonight. Um, for this Monday, Thursday, worship will feel very different. So how is this worship different? And yet, though we are scattered in our own homes and we cannot gather at God's house, we can still find ourselves together in the heart of God and in God's love. And the meal itself will certainly be different. This meal that we understand to be a community meal, something that we do together, it will be different. You may be alone with your family or just your pets. But perhaps this year, in the isolation and uncertainty of our time, we can begin to understand the isolation, the weariness, the uncertainty, the questions which sat around the table when Jesus and his friends gathered. And for all that feels different about this night, this is absolutely the same. We are still God's beloved, who is with us in these moments, these days, these nights. We are still followers of Jesus Christ, who would wash our hearts of doubt and fear. And we are still comforted by the Holy Spirit, who blesses the meal that we share tonight. And we still gather to remember and give thanks for God, Jesus' great love for each and for all of us. So let us take a moment to become aware of God's presence with us by taking a couple of deep breaths. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared for the Passover meal. Let us pray. Ever gracious God, we gather this evening in our individual homes to remember how Jesus gathered with his friends in an upper room long ago. We come bearing the marks of a frightened and broken world. 
We come amid this time of isolation with dry and thirsty spirits. Remind us in the breaking of bread of our need and of your sufficiency. Refresh us and make us whole with a cup of forgiveness and new life. Draw us near to each other in spirit and in mutual service and draw us closer to you in faithfulness and thanksgiving. Giving. Deepen in us a sense of your steadfast love for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So it was a Passover meal that Jesus enjoyed with his friends that night long ago, on the night that he was betrayed. And on Passover, the Jews celebrate and give thanks for how God freed Israel from the bondage of slavery and in Egypt with a mighty hand. They rehearse the story, the details, so that as a people they will not forget. Rehearsing, remembering is important. It leads to great thanksgiving to our God for God's help in ages past. And it gives courage and hope for the years to come, having been reminded of God's faithfulness through the ages. And that is what we do this night. We remember, we give thanks, and we receive courage and hope for the days ahead from our ever faithful and grace-filled God. Now in the midst of this Thanksgiving and celebration, which was the Passover meal, there was a shadow hovering over that meal. For when it was evening and all had been prepared and the 12 had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said this. Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to one another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, you have said so. We gather in our homes as a community in need of a savior. We too have betrayed and denied Christ in our lives. So let us be honest in our confession to God, trusting in God's mercy and God's great power to forgive. Our prayer, our prayer of confession will include moments of silence. Let us pray. Merciful God, we have not loved you with all our heart and mind and strength and soul. We have not loved our neighbors as you taught us. Even under the shadow of the cross, our faith wavers before threat. Forgive and heal us by your steadfast love made known to us in the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends, the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. 
that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. There is more grace in God than there is sin in us. Friends, know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never, never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. As Jesus shared the bread and cup with his friends long ago, so he invites us to this table which he has prepared in our many homes. Christ is our host and he bids us to come. And so come to this table not because your faith is unshakable, but because you need strength for the journey ahead. Come not because you are worthy, but because you are welcome. Friends, as we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper, let us remember God's faithfulness as we pray. Let us pray. We love you, O God, and give our thanks and praise. Out of chaos, you brought order and created new life. When our ancestors cried out from the chaos and cruelty of slavery, you led them safely through the sea to freedom. When we created chaos through sin of our do own doing, you sent prophets to call us home to you. In the fullness of time, you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show us the depths of your love for us and the power of your great mercy and grace. In the chaos of our current time, we trust and rest in your steadfast love. We give you thanks and praise for Jesus, and we remember how he came to us, poor and vulnerable, how he taught us by story and example, how he fed us on hillside and seashore, how he came to show us your love and how he loved us to the end. He could have forsaken the cross, but took it up, giving his life so that we would know that we are never alone, even in the most isolated moments, but rather are surrounded by your resurrection love this night and in every moment to come. On this night, pour out your spirit on the gifts of the bread and the cup, and on your children scattered in so many places. May the bread which is broken remind us that we are made whole by your love, even as we seek to be faithful in caring for all those who seem so far apart from us in these days. And may the cup from which we drink Remind us that we are filled with your grace so we might be people of hope in times of despair, so we might be people of love in times of anger, so we might be people of peace in the face of fear. And when these long days and nights of isolation are over, and we are once again gathered as your people, we will join hands around your meal, singing glory and honor and praise and love to you. God of our hearts in every moment, Jesus of our hopes in every night, spirit of our love in every person.
Amen and amen. Friends, I trust that you have your elements before you now, and you are invited to break your bread as I break mine, and to pour out your cups of juice as I lift the cup. This is the bread of life, broken for you, remember. This is the cup of salvation for you, remember. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim, yes, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God, and those gifts at your table are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Eat, drink, and be filled. So I invite you to share this meal now with those who are with you in your home. This is a joyful feast, so you do not have to keep completely silent and somber. But remember that this is the Lord's table and the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he has given himself for us. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us pray. God of grace, we give you thanks that you have prepared this feast for us, the rich feast of our redemption. By the nourishment of this holy meal, make us ready to face the days ahead with lives that proclaim your great love for the world. And make us ever, ever ready for the day when you will wipe away all tears and swallow up death forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There has been a note of saying on Facebook that has been going around this week that something like that this week as we have this official warning that we could experience the deadliest week in our communal life. As Christians, we ponder the deadliest week in Jesus' life the deadly kiss of betrayal of Judas, the denial of Peter, the leader washing his hands of Jesus, the torture and the death of Christ. It is a dark time, it is a difficult time in our um, communal life, um, even amidst some signs of um, good news. And it is certainly a difficult week in our Christian year. So I wanted to share with you some words that I heard from my friend, Mindy Douglas, who's a pastor in Durham. I don't know if they're her words or not, but I wanted to share them with you. In death, God becomes God with us to the depths of human experience. In the death of Jesus, God says to us, 
There is no pain that you can bear that I have not borne. There is no darkness that you that can overtake you that I have not seen. There is no fear that can grip you that I have not heard. All that comes to you, I have passed through. And when you pass through it, even death, I will be with you. The cross does not answer the question why. The cross insistently whispers, I am with you. God is with us. So as you depart from this table, have courage and have hope. And the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit abide with you this night and always. Amen.